So today we will be covering a topic called complex valued renewable networks, which is under unit five. I'm Dr. Pankaj Arivar from IMS Indian College, Kazakhstan. So let us first try to understand uh, why uh, we are talking about uh, complex valued networks. Why uh, we are talking about complex values? Because uh, up till now, uh, whatever uh, neural networks we have studied, we were dealing in terms of real values, right? We were dealing uh, inputs in terms of real values. We were dealing the weights in terms of real values. In fact, all the parameters we used to handle uh, in terms of real values. So why there is uh, suddenly a need of uh, complex value neural net, uh, complex values, and how and what kind of advantages we can have with uh, the complex value representation in neural networks. So uh, the uh, issue with the uh, real values is that. Uh, we can only play with the magnitude of the real values. Either we can increase the value, either we can decrease the values. But there are a set of uh, real world applications uh, which not only talks about the magnitude of the data, which also talks about, uh, about the direction of the data. They also have something called phase or the angle associated with the data, especially uh, in the uh, applications of your uh, uh, image processing, it can be time series predictions, it can be bioinformatics, it can be robotics. Ample number of applications and uh, domains are there where magnitude enough is not, uh, 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 is able to represent the data uh, in a correct way. So you need a wider perspective of uh, the data. So in that uh, form, we are talking about uh, the complex valued neural networks. So uh, in order to first understand this, uh, let us first uh, try to gauge that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, complex valued neural networks, so what actually we mean by that? So uh, uh, theoretically, a complex valued neural network is a network uh, which, uh, or which has weights. We all know that uh, the entire learning is hidden into your weights, right? So which have weights, which uh, have a threshold values, inputs, and output signals, they all are represented by complex numbers. However, the activation functions and the derivatives uh, have to be mapped or have to be manipulated in such a way that they are able to uh, showcase the well, uh, uh, showcase the entire complex domain of your uh, 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 values that we will be dealing with. So, it, uh, so these activation function derivatives need to be well behaved everywhere in the complex domain. Uh, it has been found that the complex uh, valued neural networks have shown to be a more powerful uh, capabilities or have more abilities uh, in terms of the data representation when we talk about uh, the real values or the real world examples as compared to your uh, real value representations. So uh, as you can see over here that um, the uh, input signals uh, would now be represented uh, by your, uh, uh, your complex numbers. Uh, even your, uh, uh, these weights would also be represented by your complex numbers, right? Even your threshold values again can be represented by your complex numbers. Output signals also can be represented by your complex numbers. But we would be uh, not changing the activation functions, only uh, some kind of mapping would be required so that it can map these. Uh, complex numbers from input to the output part, right? Um, next, uh, if you can see over here, uh, these uh, complex numbers does provide you a richer set of uh, ability or it provides a richer set of data as compared to your uh, real values. Uh, especially uh, this complex number helps you to represent your data in a higher dimensions. And if you remember that uh, we, at times, uh, we need to uh, take our uh, data from lower dimensions to the higher dimensions. Because uh, if you recall that uh, we used to do a problem called XOR, isn't it? Uh, in that particular case, uh, uh, this XOR problem by applying a simple uh, perceptron network, we were not able to classify the data by uh, drawing a linear line. So in that case, we need to uh, upgrade the dimensions of your data. In that case, I have to take uh, the data from one dimension or two dimension to higher dimensions. So that in the higher dimensions, it has often been uh, found that uh, the data gets separable 
which was not uh, possible in the lower dimensions. So in that case, uh, the complex numbers uh, would be a better representation in terms of uh, converting your data or taking your data from a lower dimensions to your higher dimensions. So uh, we were talking about the extra problem, right? So this is what I was talking about, that uh, such as like uh, if we are going to project one dimensional XOR data into a higher dimensional space, so that uh, a linear but a higher dimensional threshold can partition your data, right? And uh, normally in such kind of uh, complex value neural networks, we simply uh, replace the use of real values with uh, our complex values, and we keep everything same, the activation functions, we talked about the error functions, we talked about the, uh, and uh, the same kind of uh, structure or same kind of system of link weights would again be there as we used to study with the conventional networks. Now with the complex weights, uh, now these uh, signals are not just now amplified or diminished. Like for example, uh, real values, uh, we could have only amplified, increased the value or we could have decreased the value. Now. With the introduction of these complex numbers, uh, there is additional uh, information or there's additional thing that we can do with my data that is called the rotation. I can rotate the data also. We'll see how, uh, why we're talking of rotation and what sense we'll see. So there is a kind of significant and additional change uh, in uh, something called richness of your neural networks, right? And we would call this now, uh, from now onwards, higher uh, functionality, right? rather than higher dimensionality because uh, higher dimensionality is in different sense. It is in terms of your features. Now here, uh, what we are doing is we are trying to, uh, uh, we are able to uh, add up to the functionality of my data uh, other than your amplitude or sorry, other than your uh, the magnitude of the data. We are also started talking in terms of the rotation. We have also started talking in terms of your angle associated with your data. So let us see that and uh, we'll see that how this uh, phase or how this angle can be useful in the representation of a much richer set of applications. So it should be, uh, it should lead to a richer ability to learn more complex relations, you know, training data with the introduction of your higher functionality into your data. Definitely it is going to help you uh, in terms of uh, better learning or uh, learning the complex relationships in your training data because up till now we were only uh, talking in terms of your uh, magnitude associated with your data. Now, why are we talking about the rotations? Because uh, if you remember, like uh, uh, when you multiply by a complex number, uh, doesn't change your values magnitude. It can also change the direction. And once we start dealing the weights or inputs in terms of uh, uh, these uh, complex numbers, then the direction or the rotation will also come into play. So for example, uh, if uh, we multiply, uh, for example, a complex number by the value zero plus one J, uh, then it actually uh, implies mathematically that a rotation of uh, uh, 90 degrees by anti-clockwise direction, or we can also say pi by two radians. Uh, just to uh, have a recap, like uh, if we all know that the complex numbers are represented in this fashion. So here we have uh, your, uh, on X axis, we have your, uh, real part that is a on uh, y axis we have your imaginary part and the number itself the complex number itself is represented by some point in uh, plane which uh, is represented somehow by a phase right so this phase is automatically associated this angle is automatically gets associated with a complex number and that is what is uh, the the advantage or the beauty of these complex numbers so the uh, over here we would now start representing the weights uh, as a complex numbers as we have already discussed right now we have to decide upon like uh, these weights okay we have uh, decided that we are going to use the complex numbers now does we need to do something about the nodes also the way we represented the nodes uh, do we need to make some kind of changes in these nodes representation or not so that thing that we need to answer right Again, uh, just a small recap on complex numbers, for those who are not uh, uh, or must have uh, forgotten about complex numbers. So uh, we're talking about the absolute value of your uh, radius of a complex. So this radius can be represented by a Pythagoras uh, solution where it is nothing but root over of x squared plus of y squared. Now this is called the magnitude or the modulus of your uh, complex number. Uh, that is uh, z is equal to x plus of yi. Right? 
Now, this argument of Z, this argument of Z, which would be also called the phase, we're talking about this phase, this phase would be represented now on uh, by the value called ARGZ. So wherever you find this, you, uh, so you must be able to recall that we are talking of the phase value, we're talking about the angle, right? The value of this phase is expressed in radians, as we all know mathematically, and it can increase by any integer multiple of two pi and can still have the same angle that we all know. Now, uh, if we talk about your uh, traditional uh, neural networks, uh, it was uh, actually doing two major things. Uh, one was it was able to sum up your all input signals and in what fashion we all know that it was doing what? Summation of xi into wi, right? That is what we were doing, right? And then uh, what we were doing is, uh, then we were applying some kind of uh, activation functions in order to produce your output values, isn't it? That is what we used to do. Like for example, we were uh, uh, applying your sigmoid function, which was basically your uh, S-shaped, or we were applying uh, step-shaped to reflect how we would be dealing uh, these inputs, how we would be dealing with this activation inputs. Now, uh, we could keep this activation functions, this format of activation functions, or the fund of these activation functions similar, right? And uh, some kind of, uh, some researchers have in fact tried uh, and are trying to use these logistic functions or tennis functions with complex inputs also. So let us see how they, uh, how this can be done. But however, uh, when we try or uh, when we apply these logistic functions or the similar kind of activation functions associated with these complex numbers, so there can be some issues also that we need to understand and therefore we have to take appropriate steps in order to uh, tackle these issues. The calculations are, aren't that uh, easy now, right? When we start uh, taking complex numbers, the calculations become a little difficult. Especially if you remember so that we used to uh, use the gradient descent, right? But uh, when we would be, uh, we used to use these gradient descent algorithm in order to minimize the error, right? So like uh, the problem with gradient descent is that when uh, these gradient descents are not uh, differentiable. If you remember that uh, gradient descent algorithm involves uh, your uh, first order derivative of your squared difference error that we were dealing with, right? So when we are going to differentiate these gradient descent uh, uh, with uh, in terms of complex values, that would uh, create issues. So that is one issue that we need to tackle. So uh, there isn't a very uh, good fit or a fitment between your rotating singles and activation functions becomes an issue therefore. So we need to, uh, uh, because uh, till now uh, we uh, assumed a simple incoming signal whose magnitude was only uh, of importance to us because till now whatever input comes was your real numbers and uh, we were only dealing with uh, uh, its magnitude. There was nothing uh, called uh, rotation or nothing called angle associated with that data. But since now we have started using these complex numbers, so, so we have an additional information, in the additional uh, issue that we need to take care of. That is, uh, other than your magnitude, we have to also take care of uh, how we are going to deal uh, with this angle or the phase value uh, by using the same activation function. So, uh, so let us, or we have to try something different uh, out of this context. So what we can done, uh, can do is like, uh, we can force a signal to have a magnitude of one. And why this magnitude of one, we will talking, right? So we can force a signal to have a magnitude of one, but we would allow the rotation part. That is the phase part would remain there. Only thing that we are trying to curb is your magnitude part, which can be made to one. This means that uh, we are working with signals that would sit uh, on the unit circle in the complex domain, uh, we talk in terms of mathematics. In essence, we would actually mean that we have discarded your what magnitude part, but we have kept the phase part. And how this is going to be useful, we'll uh, talk uh, uh, in a short while. So the benefit of complex domain are its ability for the signals to be rooted around that we have already learned. Now, uh, if you recall uh, from your previous learning uh, while working on your uh, real value numbers, this absolute magnitude was never that important in the uh, traditional neural networks also. Because if you remember that uh, with the real values or with the inputs, whatever may be the magnitude, for example, there could be two features. One feature has the values in the range of suppose zero to five, right? And we could have another feature which uh, where the, all the values in the domain are within the range of suppose 
uh, 10,000 to 20,000. So magnitude wise, both the features, uh, there was a huge difference, right? But with most of the uh, algorithms that, uh, that we used to apply, we used to normalize our signals. If you remember, we used to do what? We used to normalize the signals. But once we normalize the signals, for example, uh, once we normalize the signals by uh, bringing it down to the range of suppose zero to one. So the overall effect of that magnitude, which was looking huge in the uh, first round, uh, comes out to be a very less effect. So the effect uh, comes out to be very less because our task was to uh, do some kind of uh, category classification. And uh, that can also be done by uh, on the basis of your what? On the relative uh, categorization or relative values also, whether the values are small or big, that doesn't make a difference. So relative magnitude was uh, good enough for us to make uh, these kind of category classification. So if we can, uh, uh, Think about it, this magnitude actually does not have so much of importance or so much of significance, and therefore we can play around with this magnitude now, right? So, what we can do is so, uh, for example, again, like uh, uh, we used to have your logistic and tennis functions, which used to squeeze your, your input magnitude to a specific range, irrespective of whatever is the magnitude signals, right? That is what I have explained right now, right? So so it doesn't uh, really actually matter or uh, it doesn't really need to do anything uh, with what we have just uh, done because we have to now understand that uh, how does this complex node activation function will do whether we want to make some kind of changes with the representation of these complex uh, nodes activation function or not. So the incoming signals uh, that have already been rotated by the complex weights, we all know that because now since we have started dealing your uh, complex numbers and we have just learned that complex numbers inherently have a phase associated with it. So when we have your complex uh, incoming signals as input values, so and we have weights also as the, uh, the complex numbers, so we are already associating what? We are already associating a phase or an angle associated with it in terms of complex uh, number, right? So all that remains to tackle is to make sure that the sum, the overall sum, that is uh, what we used to do uh, while uh, doing the activation uh, input. We used to collect the activation input in terms of xi and wi. So the only thing that we need to tackle right now is that we need to make sure that this uh, activation input sum is scaled back to a inner circle. We need to rescale it back to what? A uh, inner circle. Let us understand it mathematically also. That is what we are trying to say. See, this uh, total activation input uh, formula would remain same, right? So this would remain same and what we are trying to say is that combination of signals remains same. What we are doing is we would be rescaling back to a unit circle length by applying these kind of activation functions. Now, let us understand that uh, uh, till now what we have uh, mathematically done. So what we have done right now is we have designed a kind of or assumed a kind of system or a machine which uh, deals with your rotating signals as they pass through. And we have also said that we are are constraining or we are refraining these signals to a magnitude of one and uh, they will only have uh, the angle part or the phase part. In other words, uh, we, uh, they are always on an inner circle, right? So uh, how does this work with inputs that might be real world or real values, right? For example, if we have uh, real values or real world inputs, then how this is going to work? with the inputs that can be real, it can be complex, or any kind of inputs can be there. And then uh, uh, when we say that uh, uh, these uh, real value, value uh, real world uh, values are uh, uh, in form of a complex or real world values and not complex uh, numbers on inner circle. So then we have to take care of that, how we are going to manage this. And we have to also take care that, uh, like uh, what about the answers that we want from our neural network? We might uh, want a network to give answers in terms of suppose larger uh, real values or it can be a uh, uh, categorized classification. For example, labels may be associated with the outputs. So we have to ensure or we have to take care that how we are going to deal with this aspect of the complex value neural network. Now from uh, our work on uh, what we have learned from your traditional networks, we have seen that uh, there's a need to prepare or there is a need to pre-process the inputs so that we can do the mapping of your uh, from the input to the output or between your hidden layers to the output. So 
traditionally we would be extending this expect only we need to do some kind of mapping function we have to uh, associate some kind of mapping so that we can associate any kind of input values whether complex or uh, any real value uh, inputs that can come from the internal or the external environment and still we are able to map on uh, this complex domain so the uh, input needs to be mapped to a complex in its circle that is what we need to do mathematically we'll talk about why um, and imagine suppose we have a network of uh, say suppose one neuron right or single uh, node and uh, the node takes the input and we need to uh, map that to an answer right that is what we used to do in the uh, traditional uh, simple neural networks now in order to do this we uh, it needs to do something uh, with that data right because the data can be a big uh, it can have a huge value it can have a huge magnitude a small magnitude and uh, they might be mismatched between the different features so uh, a transformation or some kind of uh, function uh, has to be applied or we used to apply with uh, these kind of expects isn't it so to give the nodes a better chance of learning uh, the incoming signal uh, should be uh, have a greater uh, spread or should have a greater variance and we know all uh, this uh, by the basic principles of your statistics that uh, uh, data uh, must have such a variance so that it can represent uh, signify the entire domain of your data that you are dealing with so uh, this variance of the data or the spread of the data is more important isn't it and because we all know that the, the data with the low variance can uh, cause a uh, uh, lot of uh, difficulties uh, in the learning it can uh, result in uh, your uh, the overall training and the learning part of the neural network so just a recap on uh, what exactly we mean uh, mathematically by unit circle so when we say unit circle we actually mean the uh, that uh, we are talking about the radius of one and uh, when we talk about radius one there's a lot of advantages because of it right so by having a radius of one we can immediately can measure the sine cosine and tangent directly by uh, we can directly measure them uh, from this uh, circle as you can see for example uh, if we put say suppose this angle uh, theta to be zero that means the cos zero becomes one the cos zero once uh, one becomes this value so we can directly uh, get an interpretation that uh, when we uh, take uh, the angle phase is equal to zero so that is one aspect that we can directly uh, uh, find out that what you mean by uh, angle zero right Similarly, if the phase uh, becomes, uh, suppose, 90 degrees, so cos 90 becomes 0, sine 90 becomes 1. So this can be represented very easily over here. So by uh, representing of radius 1, we can actually uh, can represent a number of uh, uh, values uh, from a uh, circle, and we can directly represent these values very easily. Similarly, uh, we all know that uh, we have to apply the Pythagoras theorem in order to in uh, order to find uh, this distance right uh, now the input values uh, the, that run uh, along your uh, real axis that is the imaginary uh, part is zero suppose then we can have only what two possible values right because why uh, we are talking about this in this case because suppose we have uh, the real values suppose input values are real uh, right so then how we are going to represent uh, this with a complex very neural network that is what is the concern uh, right now is so in case we are taking the real values and suppose uh, in that case we all know that the imaginary part would become zero so we would only have or would left with only two possible representations or the uh, possible phases whether it can be zero it can be pi radial right but uh, merely having two representations will not help us because in that case i would be only doing a uh, very limited kind of uh, applications it can be at the most a uh, kind of binary kind of classifications because I would not be able to represent a uh, uh, greater number of classes in that case right so for a network or uh, uh, for a node uh, uh, with this kind of limited uh, phase uh, information is not going to uh, help me, right so we have to do something else so what we can do is uh, we need to map the inputs to the unit circle and cover a good range of phases right so we can map what we can map the inputs to the unit circle that we talked earlier and then we can cover a good number of ranges of phases uh, from that circle so how we can uh, how we do this depends on a specific kind of problem but uh, what we can do is we can have a range uh, we can have a range from the maximum to the minimum 
for example uh, of the input values it can be your uh, the input values can be from 0 to maximum of 2 pi and we can have number of uh, phases or number of uh, 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 we can uh, say for a number of phases that can be represented as bisecting the lines and uh, we can have uh, ample number of classes that we can think about as uh, example over here for example in some scenario it could be the case that the input values uh, shouldn't map around because for example uh, if we're talking about a classification of the categories like from for letters a to z then if uh, we all know that a is not uh, semantically very close to z but uh, it uh, but would be uh, when it is mapped to a unit circle because then i'm going to map this to a unit circle uh, uh, immediately from a to z or from z to a it might come right so but uh, the closeness among them are not there so we need to do something so what we can do is we can insert a mapping gap so this is how we can do so by inserting these mapping gaps we can uh, ensure that there is uh, semantic or semantic differences put among the uh, the classes right and uh, we can ensure that a small change of a doesn't lead to uh, directly to z so in a similar way we can map the nodes uh, output back again to a meaningful values uh, whether they talk about labels or classes and uh, we uh, and if we had in case suppose real values then we need to have uh, simply reverse the uh, previous mapping back to the unit circle right and if in case we have normal categories then we need to just slice up what the uh, circles into the sectors the way we have done or shown here right? so that uh, each of these sectors or each of these uh, can represent a kind of class right so and uh, as you can see that uh, why a sectors by sectors should be target value for training isn't it that is uh, pretty easy to understand that so we can have an ample number of uh, classes that we can uh, find or we can represent by uh, uh, having these kind of bisectors into my uh, uh, diagram, right? So, so uh, up till now, what we have uh, learned, or up till now, we have uh, uh, come to a kind of conclusion that phase is uh, phase information is of uh, great importance, yeah. and uh, from as compared to your uh, real world uh, problems as considered. So let us uh, uh, take an image, suppose. Uh, suppose we are taking a image from real world, any kind of image, right? And suppose we decompose it into a single, into a frequency and the magnitude pairs, right? So if we, uh, and we know that we have to apply a Fourier transform uh, in order to do so. And suppose we did two things with this image. Suppose at first we ignored the phase where we have it set to zero and we just uh, using the magnitude. So we, what we are trying to understand is that why uh, how this phase uh, information is more important as compared to the magnitude uh, via a simple example so we have taken an image and we have done two things first in first case we have ignored the phase right and second case we have ignored the magnitude and let's see how it uh, affects uh, the overall thing so uh, this is the original image that we took so once we uh, uh, included the phase information and other time we have only included the uh, magnitude information so as an experiment you can see that the phase information carries some more information as compared to your magnitude. So there, uh, there are a lot of many examples and uh, such kind of uh, experiments can be seen, uh, so which uh, gives you a practical kind of uh, justification that the phase becomes more important as compared to magnitude. So we have kept the magnitude, we have ignored the magnitude and kept it to one, and uh, then we have uh, taken only the, uh, the the rotation phase or the phase information has been included in that uh, inputs, right? And if in case we change the activation function from a sigmoid real shape, uh, real uh, function to a mapping uh, to a signal to inner circle. So what does this mean to a learning algorithm? The first thing uh, we need to realize is that this mapping PZ is not differentiable, right? So in terms of complex domains. And remember that uh, we also need to differentiate the activation function. So we could do the gradient descent down the error function to find a better uh, weight and a better value, right? So in this case, we doesn't need to differentiate. And uh, so the gradient descent uh, is not applicable over here. So if you can look over here, uh, it shows your actual output uh, from the complex node and what the target output should be. And uh, this is uh, also illustrates the correlation that we needed. That is the error, right? Uh, so there are certain kind of uh, merits uh, associated with your complex uh, numbers. First is your representation of information. 
And since the input and output signals are supposed to be the complex numbers, as we already discussed, so uh, so we have uh, added a higher dimensionality uh, feature to our data because we have started using the uh, phase or the angle part also to our data. So representation becomes much richer, and therefore uh, uh, greater uh, uh, examples or greater applications uh, with a wider spectrum of your uh, applications can be considered as input. And then the characteristics of learning. The, the learning speed of, uh, it has been experimentally found uh, that the learning speed of the complex value, the back propagation learning, uh, which we call complex BP uh, for uh, multi-layered uh, complex networks is about uh, two to three times faster as compared to your counterpart that is the real value part. And uh, in addition to that, the required number of parameters with uh, which we talked about weights and threshold we uh, again take a lot of uh, lesser number of parameters are required uh, when we compare it with the real value cases. And uh, there are certain kind of inherent properties also of such kind of uh, complex value neural networks. Like for example, ability to learn two dimensional transformations that we have already uh, seen. Like uh, the complex value uh, can now transform your geometric figures like rotations, simulated transformations, parallel displacement of straight lines. A number um, ample of examples to talk about. So applications to the generation of fractal images. So there are a number of examples where uh, we can now start applying our, uh, the same kind of networks, like uh, for example, the uh, back propulsion network, even to two dimensional transformations also. Then the orthogonality of decision boundaries. Uh, decision boundary of a complex value neural network, basically we know that it consists of uh, two hypersurfaces uh, that intersect your, uh, or them in an orthogonal manner. And it is to divide the, uh, the entire decision space into four kind of sections. So the several problems that cannot be solved with the real valued neural uh, network now can be solved with a single uh, complex valued neural network using these orthogonal principle, orthogonal uh, property or principle. Similarly, the structure of the critical points. The, uh, the critical points uh, uh, satisfying certain uh, uh, conditions of the complex valued neural network with one uh, output neuron uh, caused by the hierarchical structure are not uh, local minima only, unlike the real valued case where the critical point was only, uh, which was the derivative of the loss function and was equal to zero. So, so there are a number of added advantages that uh, the complex value neural network can provide us as compared to the real value neural network. 